Welcome to week three of the Mountain Valley News Pigskin Preview. I'm Monk Blevins. And I'm Will Jacobs. And we're back with you this week to talk a little high school football. Well, Will, another great weekend of football. Absolutely. A lot of, a lot of region play, so a lot of teams jump, jump started with a good region win and others just didn't, were unable to get one. Oh, absolutely. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about our, uh, we had our team of the week and our player of the week. Of course, the Crossville Lions or the Mountain Valley News Team of the Week. They had a big win over Scottsboro, a score of 28-21, and a, you know, just a huge win for that program after struggling for several years and uh, you know improved last year, and now they're setting it 2-0 and yeah, the start yeah. of the season. So uh, congratulations to uh, Crossville and Coach Miles Holcomb, and we will be down there on Friday and presenting them with the uh, team, of, uh, team of the Week trophy and also Team of the Week t-shirts. So. Congratulations them. And then also we want to congratulate Chris Shavers from the Sylvania Rams. He is our Mountain Valley News Player of the Week. Uh, he had 295 total yards, had seven tackles on defense. Uh, I think it was 158 yards rushing and had a 50-yard uh, pass uh, reception in the game. So just a great, great night. As the Sylvania Rams had a big win, and we'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. But congratulations to Crossville and to Chris Shavers of the Sylvania Rams on their Team of the Week and their Player of the Week. Absolutely. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right into our games last week. And first one we want to talk about was the Mountain Valley News Game of the Week, and it was the Plainview Bears and North Sand Mountain. North Sand Mountain traveled down to uh, Plainview, and uh, you know we talked about we thought this would be a very close game. Well, guess what? It wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> a very close game. Uh, Plainview wins that game 35 to 11. Uh, what's your thoughts on the Plainview Bears after well, I hearing feel that like score? And, and uh, they really stepped it up because going into that game, everybody thought, oh, well, North Sand Mountains beat them two years in a row. And uh, so they had they had that on their – Plainview had that on their mind saying, hey, we can't let this be three in a row. We've got to do something to stop them. Uh, absolutely. You know, that game started out – I was there for uh, the first half and, uh, you know, North Sand Mountain gets the ball and they hit a long pass right off the bat and everybody, you could just kind of see the wind going out of people in the bleachers. Like, <laughs> oh no, here it goes again. But, uh, you know, this Plainview Bear team, you know, they stopped them deep in their own territory. The defense stepped up and, uh, you know, Jacob Wooden had another great game for the Plainview Bears and just a, just a great night. Offensively, you know, the Bears moved the ball. Uh, Bailey Dukes had 227 total yards. He had 46 yards rushing and 14 of 25 for 181 yards passing. So, right. what's your thoughts on Dukes as he continues to seem like get better every week? Yeah, I, I agree. It seems like every week he has more and more yards on both rushing and passing because he's a dual threat quarterback. He can be he can pick you apart with his arm, and then once you start dropping back to play the pass, he can beat you on the ground. Oh, absolutely. Clay Cooper, and we talked about him being a workhorse, he rushed for 104 yards on the night. And Cade Willingham, we hadn't missed him a lot, but man, what a fantastic player he is. He had 62 yards on four catches, but also just a great, great player on defense, absolutely. too. So, a big, big win for the Plainview Bears, and a you know, they'll be traveling, or yes, they will be traveling up to Pisgah this week in another big region game. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll talk about that game here in just a few minutes. Next game we'll talk about is the Fort Payne Wildcats. Fort Payne setting at 3-0. and right. Already won more games than they won last year. Absolutely. So what's your thoughts on this Fort Payne Wildcat team? Well, it seems like they keep, they're just like Plainview, they keep getting better and better every week. And, uh, Carter Penholster ran back another kickoff for a touchdown. So the two weeks in a row he's done that. So it seems yeah. like the team's going to have to focus when they go on to play Fort Payne. They're going to have to worry about special teams, offense, and defense because Payne, uh, Fort Payne can score on you on any part of the ball. Oh, absolutely. You know, Roger Engel, of course, he called into our scoreboard show and, uh, you know, he said he was a little surprised. Right before halftime, I think it was 56 seconds left before half when uh, Southside had taken the lead 14-7. to seven. And they kicked it deep to Penholster, man, and he took it right up the sideline for, uh, you know, I think it was 90 yards for a mm -hmm. touchdown. So, uh, you know, he is a definite weapon. And, if, and Fort Payne, you know, beat Southside 28-14. to 14. And, uh, you know, the one thing that impressed me about Fort Payne this year was, you know, last year they led that football game till late in the fourth quarter, but they could not finish. Nah. 
This year, they were actually behind just, uh, you know, with just a few minutes, seconds left in the half, tied it up, and they come back the second half and dominated that football game. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Coach Paul Ellis has done a great job. Again, Carter Penholster, he had 197 total yards on the night, two touchdowns. Uh, Jay Ellis passed for 122 yards on the night. And, uh, you know, and you know they've just got all kinds of weapons on that team. And, and, and I'm telling you, the defense, we well, don't give them enough credit, but their defense is swarming all over the football. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what's your what's your thoughts on this Fort Payne? You know they're off this week. They get a bye week, and then they really get into the meat of the schedule after that. So, uh, so what's your thoughts on this Fort Payne team? Just what what do they need to do to improve as they go the next two weeks? They they uh, they have to travel to Coleman, and then I think after that they've got Edwall. Well, going into this week, they'll have five full days of practice. So that really they just need to stay healthy. And uh, I know that Roger said that. I don't remember his name, but he got hurt and he was yeah, out. Cole Wales. Yeah, I believe, Wales, I believe so. And said he'd be out for at least two weeks or something like that. So that's going to get – and he's one of their big contributors. Absolutely. And so that gives him time to recover from whatever injury he had. And uh, I think that they'll just break down and watch a lot of film on these – upcoming games and then just go into practice and work on what they need to do to stop those teams. You know, talking about the Coleman, who they will be playing, not this week, but the following week, uh, you know, Coleman uh, put a pretty good whooping on an Albertville, a pretty good Albertville team on Friday night. So I know that's going to be a big test for Fort Payne, but, uh, you know, they've got to be excited about where they're at right now and, uh, and, and with the, you know, with the play of uh, Penn Holster and, and Ellis and uh, Michael Shaddix is playing mm -hmm. really well for them, and Colton Wells had been playing really well. Yeah. He did get hurt in that game, and uh, so we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, J.C. Grote, another r great running back they've got, and uh, they've got a you know a pretty talented football team if they can stay healthy and uh, you know having this week off and two weeks to prepare for Coleman, you never know. So uh, that's going to be a big game. On uh, whatever next week is, I guess that's the 22nd, I think. So, yeah. you know, next game we'll talk about is the Geraldine Bulldogs. You know, Pisgah traveled down to Geraldine, and uh, you know, everybody thought that was going to be a close football game. Mm -hmm. You know, Pisgah come in at two and zero. Of course, uh, Geraldine had lost to five the week before, 33 to nothing, and so I think everybody felt mm -hmm. like you know, very close football game, uh, and uh, you know, some people I think even picked Pisgah to win, but. Uh, it didn't happen. So no. talk to us a little bit about these Geraldine Bulldogs. I think you were at part of that game. Yeah, I went to part of that game, and I was at the Fife game last week. And against Fife, it seemed like Geraldine couldn't get things going on offense, but that was not the case this past week because uh, at the end of the first quarter, it was 27 to nothing. And just offensively and defensively, Geraldine improved a whole lot, which I know, like we said, anybody that plays Fife is – going to have rough times on both offense and defense, but they really, really improved from last week to this week. Um, going into practice after that five game last week, that they, they really focused on what the, on themselves, really, because, they, I mean, let's face it, you play five, you're, you're going to have to just worry about you and take care of the ball and stuff oh, like absolutely. that. Well, you know, uh, like I said, big region win for Geraldine, and, uh, you know, they're right in the thick of this region, you know with, uh, you know, early in the season. And uh, Thomas Willoughby, the quarterback, had a great night. He was four of eight for 105 yards mm -hmm. passing, had one touchdown. David White scored two touchdowns on the night. And uh, so uh, this Geraldine team, you know, Coach Brad Waltrip has done a fantastic job there. And, uh, you know, I think they've got a tough test coming up this week. But, uh, you know, it'll, it's a non-region game for them. But, uh, you know, this Geraldine team will be right in the thick of things I as agree. the season goes on in this this Region 7, Class 3A. So, uh, again, great win for Geraldine and, and you know, setting it 1-0 and in the region. And, you know, right now, you can't beat that. No. So, uh, next, we want to talk about the Sylvania Rams. Sylvania uh, faced a, a, what most people thought would be a pretty good Cedar Bluff team. And they absolutely manhandled Cedar Bluff, 42 to nothing. And, again, Chris Shavers was the Mountain Valley News Player of the Week. Uh, Again, had 295 total yards, seven tackles. 
but that, there was a lot more to that than just uh, Chris Shavers. You know, mm -hmm. he's got a massive offensive line. Uh, the Bowman boys, when you start talking about them, are, are what we like to call the Ram trucks. <laughs> and so, uh, so what's your thoughts on Sylvania as they, you know, this week they actually traveled New Hope for their first region game of the year. And uh, so what, what do you think about these Rams so far? Well, I think they're looking really, really good. I mean, uh, their defense played extremely well uh, last week to force the shutout on Cedar Bluff, and they forced a lot of turnovers from what I saw. And uh, their offense played well, too. I mean, Chris Shavers having 295 total yards. I mean, you, you can't really get much better than that for high school, really. Oh, absolutely. I, that's just a phenomenal game. Uh, you know, also the quarterback, uh, and I just went blank Spears, Blake Spears, mm -hmm. I believe is his name. And, uh, you know, just uh, uh, is playing really well. He's first year at quarterback, and, uh, you know, he's not turning the ball over a lot and, uh, you know, getting it out to his playmakers. And so uh, just a, as a great win, you know, talking to Coach Putnam on Friday night, and, uh, you know, he, he talked a lot about his offensive line and his defensive line and how well they actually played. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure if you talk to Chris Shavers and, and ask him, he would – he would be giving a lot of credit to that offensive line for opening up those holes. I for agree. Him. So, uh, big win, and uh, like I said, they'll they'll be traveling to New Hope this week, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, next game we want to talk about is the section lines, and uh, man, what a great victory for them! You know, we were there for the pep rally last week, and uh, as they were the they were the Mountain Valley News Team of the Week last week, and uh, you know, Coach Luke Powell, they just continue to get better, and uh, you know, they defeated. Uh, Decent Gaston team, 20 to six. Uh, Lane Carter rushed for 99 yards. Ryan Gray had uh, one touchdown pass, and I know Lane Carter actually caught that touchdown pass, so he had a, at least one touchdown, if not more. And uh, you know, and Anthony Scott, who has actually was really his first week of playing with the team. He started at safety for the first week. He intercepts a pass, runs it back 67 yards for a wow. touchdown. So. Uh, I think my understanding is in two games they've had six interceptions and they've run two of those back for touchdowns. So what's your thoughts on this section lines team and, and the job that this uh, coaching staff is doing with the team? Oh, I think they're doing a great job. Defense has really stepped up for them. And it sounds like this past week offense stepped up too a whole lot. I mean, with uh, defense you have you four, six interceptions and two of them are for touchdowns. I mean – you can only get improved from that, and that really boosts your confidence on the defensive side of the ball, making you a complete, uh, a complete passing threat. Because you didn't, if you force six interceptions in two games, teams are going to learn not to pass on oh, you. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, we're just uh, talking to uh, uh, the coach, and uh, you know, he was really excited about that football game and uh, and and the way they played in the game. You know. They face Asbury this week, which is a very winnable football game. Mm -hmm. You know, they could be sitting at three and one and, and basically top of their region at this point right now. And so, uh, you know, just a big, big win. Uh, looking at that schedule, you know, a lot of people thought probably section might win two or three games. But, you know, going back now and looking down their schedule, I think they have an opportunity to get six or seven wins if, uh, you know, if they keep – improving and playing like they're playing mm -hmm. right now. So uh, Coach Powell and Coach Ledbetter and, uh, and all that staff has done a fantastic job Absolutely. in a short period of time. So uh, we'll see how this shakes out this week. Uh, they, they travel, or actually Asbury travels over to section this week for another. It's a big region game, and then we'll see how that goes. And we'll talk a little bit about that in, in just a little while. You know, talk about the Fife Red Devils. They did face Asbury last week, and, of course, uh, you know, we felt like – this would be a tough game for Asbury, and it was, you know, 62 to nothing. Uh, Anderson had 120 yards, and, man, they played everybody they had on their sideline. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, when you're, when you're rebuilding a program or building a program, actually not rebuilding, they're building a program down at Asbury, uh, you probably don't want to play <laughs> five in a rebuilding time, you know, because this bunch, is they're loaded everywhere, uh, you know, of course, the quarterback had another great night, Benefield, and just like I said, he's like having a coach on the field. And, uh, you know, just, again, this this Fife team is clicking on all wheels right now. And so, uh, you know, they'll be traveling 
or actually Westbrook Christian will be traveling to Fife in another big region game for them. So what, what do you think about these Fife Red Devils as they, you know, they lose in the jamboree, if you want to call it that, to a Maplesville team who is just clobbering everybody. I, I saw where uh, they had beat somebody on Friday night 58 to nothing. Oh, wow. So what's, what do you think about this Fife Red Devil team? Well, I think last week was a good opportunity to – for Benefield to get some of those eighth graders in and get them some experience for on varsity football, and that's that's really what's been helping them. I mean, having uh, when they play teams like Asbury, he gets those younger guys in, and they get uh, varsity game experience. So when they come on up and get to sophomores, juniors, and seniors, even they have plenty of uh, early game experience. So I think that's one thing that really helps this five team because I'm I'm sure that all those seniors and juniors now were in their situation oh, wow. back when they were in eighth grade. So I think that that's really helped this five team a lot because as soon as you get on varsity, you're going to get experience at some yeah. point in time. Yeah, you know, well, this five Red Devil team, the way, <laughs> way they handle most of the teams around here, you know, in the second half, you, you're right. The young kids get a lot of experience. And, and then, man, the, that's just experience that a lot of teams can't mm -hmm. get, you know, because they're in a – uh, a nail biter every week right. to say so but uh, you know we'll talk about Fife as they uh, face a Westbrook Christian team who is not a bad football team and uh, you know next we want to talk about the Eider Hornets you know Eider setting undefeated you know coach Brent Tinker has done a fantastic job with the with the Eider Hornets getting them off to a 2-0 and start uh, Jacob Higdon had a super game against Collinsville as a you know they won that game I think 28 Seven. No, 27 to 27 to 14. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. they missed the field goal, but um, just a great game for him. He rushed for 124 yards and had a touchdown. Alex Brown had a touchdown for Eider, and Chase Townsend had a touchdown. So, what's your thoughts on this Eider football team? As they, you know, they get ready to, uh, this week. They'll be traveling to San Rock in a, mm -hmm. just a probably a big, big region game for them. This San Rock. Game. Well, I think they're just going to keep have to do just going to have to do what's been working for them and just, that's just run the football. I mean, their offensive line is huge, and I know Coach Tinker loves to run the football, and he loves to run it down your throat. And that saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so right now, running the ball for them is not broke, so I don't think they need to change anything. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I just think uh, this outer team with the seniors they've got, they've got some leadership on that football team, and they seem to be playing much better than they've played in the past. And, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Uh, they face a really good Sand Rock team this week, and, and we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, of course, the team they beat last week was the Collinsville Panthers. And, uh, you know, this young Panther team, we've talked about it. They've got four seniors on the football team, and, uh, you know, they're struggling right now. They're 0-2. Uh, but now McKinney Boy had a great night for Collinsville. He had 71 yards rushing. He had 75 yards receiving. And then Caleb Jones you know, uh, passed the ball for 117 yards on the night. And, uh, you know, the one thing looking at the stats and looking at that game was, you know, this young Collinsville football team is doing like a lot of young football teams do. You know, they're jumping off sides. Mm -hmm. They're turning the ball over in critical situations. Just – I mean, just all kinds of mistakes that a young football team does. So uh, what's your thoughts on Collinsville? What do they need to do to get rid of some of these mistakes to get well, a winning streak? I think that they need to just go into practice and focus on them because it sounds like, I mean, offense, they're doing okay. I mean, they're uh, Caleb Jones passing for almost 100, 200 yards. Yeah, 100, 120 yards. Yeah. Uh, so I think that – Offensively, they're doing fine. They just need to work on defense. And uh, if a team doesn't go, that goes on two and not one, then they need to just focus on staying on their side of the ball. And just right. what uh, I remember what Coach Arnold used to do at Geraldine. If a player fumbled the ball a lot, and you'd see him walking around school with a ball in their hand. So I think that uh, Coach Willingham might start having them, some of them do that. That way they don't turn the ball over oh, whenever game time comes yeah. around. Well, uh, you know, Collins will be traveling traveling down to Gaston this week in a big region game, and I know they would like to get that first win. And, you know, there's nothing like a win that will help a, a young group of kids, to, uh, you know, just give them that, a little bit of confidence. And I think that's what this Collinsville team needs right now. So, uh, you know, also uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Crossville Lions. They were the Mountain Valley News Team of the Week setting at 2-0. and oh. Uh, you know, Blanton Jones uh, had another great night. He had 196 yards, total yards on the night as they defeat Scottsboro 
28 to 21. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the crowd was excited even though they didn't have bleachers last week. Uh, I, I'm sure all of them brought their uh, chairs with them and, and set out and enjoyed a big win for the Crossville Lions. You know, they will actually be traveling down to Arab this week for another big, big matchup. And so, uh, what do you think about the Crossville Lions? Well, I think that uh, going into halftime last week against Scottsboro, they were up 21 to nothing, and then Scottsboro scored with a few <laughs> seconds left, and so it made it 21 to seven. And then coming out of halftime, Scottsboro scored a couple more times. And but it seemed Crossville never gave up at all. Yeah. I mean, when it was 21 to nothing, they played like it was zero to zero. Still, uh -huh. they, it was like it was still just a whole new ball game after second ha or after halftime. Coming out is like everything has started over and so it just kept that uh, intensity and kept that motivation that saying hey we haven't won yet and so we've got to do what we can to win. Oh, absolutely. You know the Crossville Lions remind me a lot of the Fort Payne Wildcats from last year. You know they led a lot of games. They actually played Scottsboro a good football game in the first half last year and uh, you know when we talk about Scottsboro last year we're talking about a team that went deep into mm -hmm. the playoffs and uh, so uh, you know, I think they finally have figured out how to finish football games, kind of like the Fort Payne Wildcats. And, uh, you know, this team is just going to get better and better. And uh, I can't say enough about Coach Miles Holcomb and, and just the job that he has done at Crossville over the past two years to get this team, you know, competitive. Absolutely. And, um, you know, this year, I don't even want to say competitive. I, I think he's got a chance to get them in a playoff if they continue to play as well as they're playing mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. So, again, just a big win for the Crossville Lions. Talk a little bit about Valley Head. Valley Head, uh, Coosa Christian traveled to Valley Head this week. And, uh, you know, most of us or maybe some of us or maybe me thought Valley Head would pull off that mm -hmm. win. But, uh, you know, Coosa Christian put it, handled them pretty well, 25-6 to six in that mm -hmm. game. Um, the Kirby boy for uh, uh, Valley Head, he continues to play well for him, and uh, he, he's a very good athlete. But uh, you know, for the Valley Head is struggling. You know, 23 players on that team. Uh, a lot of those kids are playing both ways, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it makes it tough. Uh, you know, I know most schools around here has to play some of their players both ways, but uh, you know. He doesn't have any choice. I mean, right. they have to play both ways no matter what. So what's your thoughts on Valley Head as they try to get – actually, they they were supposed to, and, and I hope this is right, they were supposed to play Jacksonville Christian. And my understanding, I got a call this week, Jacksonville Christian has forfeited the rest of their games for the year. So Valley Head actually will not be playing a game this week. So they're definitely going to win. <laughs> but uh, – so what's your thoughts on Valley Head as, you know, with an off week, I guess, if you want to say it this week, uh, gives them a chance to work on, you know, work on their on, – on some of the mistakes that they're making before they actually have to travel to Spring Garden next week? Well, I think that, uh, like you said, having to make – force all your players to play both sides of the ball, basically, that, that can wear you down. And so I feel like this week – they I mean, they'll still practice and everything, but they'll – not playing on Friday night, they'll just have an extra day of rest and that can give them some time to get their muscles built back up and stuff like that. And may, hopefully some of that fatigue can wear off a little bit. And who knows, they may even spend a few practices just uh, doing running drills so they can get in better shape to where they're more used to playing both sides of the ball. Absolutely. Well, we're up on a break right now. When we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit about the North Sun Mountain uh, Bisons and also the Pisgah Eagles. and. Uh, and then we'll, we'll actually break down this week's games when we come back. So we're going to go to a commercial break right now, and we'll be right back with you. Hello, folks. This is Greg Anthony with Team One Chevrolet in Gadsden, Alabama, bringing you a event that other dealers say can't be done. They don't know Team One Chevrolet in Gadsden, Alabama like I do. We're racing to sell 200 new and used automobiles for the month of September during our inventory wipeout event. This event is so big, Etowa County has not seen anything like this in years. Come and be part of the biggest event ever. It is Team One Chevrolet in Gadsden, Alabama. Inventory wipeout, racing to 200. I'll see you soon. Building your dream home is one of the great joys in life. At First Southern State Bank, we know construction and mortgage financing, putting today's low rates to work for you. As you and your family move closer to the completion of your new home, we know that your home is where memories are made 
and families grow stronger year after year. At First Southern State Bank in Rainsville, Scott Kirk stands ready to tailor the right construction loans to meet your needs, along with our staff of experienced loan professionals. Drop by to share your dreams with us today in Rainsville. First Southern State Bank in Rainsville, all the bank you'll ever need. College is more than an education. It's a bridge to your future. Plan your future. Envision your future. Begin your future at Northeast Alabama Community College. All right, welcome back in from the, uh, our commercials. And again, we appreciate all of our sponsors and the uh, we hope you, uh, you know, that you have, if you have a chance, go out and visit with, uh, with all of our sponsors. You know, they're a great bunch of people. And uh, so we just, uh, you know, are so thankful for them because mm -hmm. without them, we wouldn't be sitting here doing this yeah, right absolutely. now. So, but uh, let's talk a little bit about North Sand Mountain. Again, North Sand Mountain played Plainview and, uh, you know, uh, got beat 35 to 11, but they did have some bright spots in that. Uh, uh, the quarterback, the green boy, uh, mm -hmm. he had, he can throw the ball really well, has a really good arm on him. And Austin Hill, his wide receiver, he had three catches for about 90 yards in that football game. So, uh, you know, this North Sand Mountain team, uh, you know, in two tough ball games against Dade County and uh, Cedar Bluff, and then uh, uh, I guess a little surprising that the way that Plainview beat them this right. week. So what's your thoughts as North Sand Mountain, I think they will actually be traveling to Brindley Mountain this week. Well, I think that uh, they're going to have to focus on the little things, if I'm not mistaken. They had two safeties in that game right. against Plainview. And so, I mean, just, just little things like that that can really hurt you and really really get your self-confidence down a little bit. I know from, uh, from personal experience, when, sometimes once you get behind, you just don't think you can come back. And then you start making mistakes and then – that, that just ruins it even more. And so I felt like that kind of happened to this whole team once they got down, then the safety, then yeah. started turning the ball over, then another safety. That, so just little things like that that just broke them down. And I think that going in against Brindley Mountain this week that they can really just, this game they can focus on them and focus on not doing those little things. Right. Yeah, um, you know, I'll talk about North Mountain defensive-wise, they struggled a little bit. Uh, they they seem to you know they a lot of times they they got caught out of position a lot and uh, you know their best linebacker actually didn't play in the game or if he did I didn't see him on the field and the uh, 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 poor boy and uh, he is a he is a great athlete and I'm not sure uh, you know what was going on there but I, I didn't see him playing during the game so uh, hopefully you know they get him back and that'll help them uh, talk about Pisgah of course they they got beat up by Geraldine 47-21. But the, the quarterback, uh, Wyatt Wiesenant, had another great game, passed for 131 yards. Mm -hmm. But uh, so what's your thoughts on this Pisgah team, you know, after starting 2-0 and and, and and then getting, you know, I, I don't want to say manhandled, mm -hmm. I guess is not the correct word. But they took a pretty good beating this week. And, uh, you know, they'll actually be facing a Plainview team this week. Well, and uh, I was at that game for the first half, and it – so it seemed like after the after halftime they really got things going. But during the first quarter, especially they they could they struggled getting the ball moving. I mean they they get a couple of first downs, but then throw an interception or fumble or be forced to punt. And so they just never really could quite get off the offensive game going until a little bit before halftime, and then the second half was when they really got things started. So I think that they're going to have to start off against this Plainview team, they're going to have to start off strong on offense and defense because I know with Plainview, Bailey Dukes uh, can and will pick you apart with his arm and then he'll, he can run around you or even run over a, a couple of people on, his, on the ground. So they're going to have to really try to contain him and okay. focus on stopping him. Absolutely. You know, the one thing, that, and I will say with Pisgah, if they can jump out to a quick start, the one thing with Plainview that I've noticed in, in the, the previous – couple of games they played three games is is they are not a first half football no. team by any means they they struggle a little bit in the first half and then they seem to make some decent adjustments at halftime and uh, 
and come out in the second half and play a little bit better. So, uh, you know, I think Cross will, if Pisgah has an opportunity in the first half to, uh, you know, uh, make a, you know, maybe get ahead of them a couple mm -hmm. of touchdowns and, and put some pressure on Plainview in the second half. So we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, you know, we've talked about last week's teams. Now let's talk about this week. And, uh, you know, the first one we have on our list, of course, is the Valley Head Jackson Christian again. And, and, uh, and if this is not right, I hope somebody would please call me. But we got a call this week. Uh, Jacksonville Christian has forfeited my understanding the rest of their games for the mm -hmm. year. So Valley Head actually does not play this week. Right. Uh, even though it will be a win for them, it counts on the record books as a win. So the next game we'll just talk about is Crossville and Arab, and uh, you know Crossville travels to Arab. You know uh, Crossville sitting at two and zero, uh, big region game last week against Scottsboro. This is another big region game this week for them. So what does Crossville have to do as they travel down to Arab? Well, I think they really need uh, what I noticed when I was at that Scottsboro game. Scottsboro picked their secondary apart, which they're, some of their corners are not the tallest of players by no means, but it just seemed like uh, Scottsboro got two back-to-back -back deep passes and put them in the red zone. So I think that uh, Cross was going to have to focus on their secondary in order to stop a rev from throwing the deep ball on them. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I, I just I listened to some of that game while I was at the Plainview game and after leaving there, and uh, Cross will – struggled a little bit it seemed to me like getting the running game going yeah. and uh, you know now and when I say that the quarterback scrambled for a lot of yards uh, you know Blanton Jones is just a super athlete he can throw the ball he can run the ball but uh, you know you don't want your quarterback to take a beating right. all night like well, it, like uh, they can give you <laughs> I didn't notice until after until after I was leaving Jay Luther their running back was not playing that right. game so that may him being out may have caused a little setback on the running game, That's true. but I, I think I think with this Crossville team, in order for them to win this week, you know they need to get a running game because you know you know what Arab they're going to focus on the quarterback. Mm -hmm. They'll say you know he is he is their bread and butter in on on the offense, you know running and passing and whatever. So uh, I think if they can get some of these other kids involved and like the Luther kid at running back into you know, get spread the ball around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I think this Crossville team has a very good opportunity to win this football game I this agree. week. You know, the next game, and I think this is probably one of the better games of the week, and, uh, you know, Eider will be traveling up to San Rock, and, uh, you know, this Eider team comes in setting at 2-0. and oh. San Rock was in a was in a, a beat, had a great game against uh, Westbrook Christian last week, defeated him, I believe, 17-3. to three. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a phenomenal football game. So I agree. What do you think? What does Ider need to do? You know, we've talked about this. You know, when you go to San Rock, man, it's, it's, it's a tough place to play. And, you know, they always kid about your, you know, 7, 14 points down. So what does Ider need to do to get focused and ready for this San Rock football team? Well, I think that they're just going to have, when they do get there and realize the atmosphere down there, they're just going to have to block all that out and just play their, play their style of football, which is run the ball, run the ball, and run the ball. But if they could mix it in and throw and put in a couple of pass plays to throw Sandrock off, I mean, when they're expecting to run, then you do a play action or something like that. I mean, that, to throw, just to throw them off, just little things like that. I think that would help Eider to have an advantage over the Sandrock team. Oh, absolutely. Team. You know, talking about Eider again. You know, uh, the Higdon kid and the uh, uh, Townsend kid, both great, great uh, athletes. Run the ball well. Alex Brown plays fullback for him, and he's a big kid and and does a good job. Uh, they all three of those actually start on defense. Mm -hmm. Two of them at linebacker, and uh, and so uh, you know I think this Eider team has got to focus defensively on this Sandrock team. Sandrock can score points. Absolutely. And, uh, you know they scored on Plainview, and uh, they've got a pretty good passing team. And so uh, you know for Eider to win, I think they're going to have to play really good defense, and uh, defensive backs are going to have to you know uh, stay with their man, and it's easy. Basically, you know, you start running the ball, running the ball, running the ball, and your defense back start inching up, mm -hmm. inching up, inching up. And the next thing you know, they're going to they gonna drop one right over your head and, and go 70 yards right. for a touchdown. So, uh, you know, I think that's a key for Eider this week defensively. You know, they can't get caught up in Sandrock running every time and then, you know, Sandrock drop back and, and hit a little pass and, right. and burn them. So, uh, I, again, I think this is a great football game. Uh, if Eider can pull off this win, if you're talking about you know setting it three and zero 
in this region and, uh, you know, with a good opportunity to make playoffs as long as they stay healthy. Next, we got the Sylvania Rams. You know, they'll be traveling over to New Hope this week. Uh, big region game, their first region game of the season, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, uh, New Hope is struggling this year. You know, New Hope over the past two years has been, had a great football team with some great running back, had a great quarterback two years ago. But uh, new coach coming in this year, and right now they're struggling. They actually uh, uh, had to go in overtime to beat Brindley Mountain on Friday night. So uh, what's your thoughts on this game? Well, I think that this is another one of those games where Sylvania can really just go into this game and really focus on them a little bit, get ready for the next week. I mean, it's still a big game because it's the next one, don't get me wrong. But like we said, New Hope has been struggling a little bit, and as – good as Sylvania has been playing I don't think I don't see any uh, real signs of struggle for the Rams yeah you know the one thing that I do think with Sylvania is they got they have to focus on this game you know it gets a lot of times you know you hear the score well they had to beat up Brindley Mountain in overtime and those kids get to think well this game's not gonna be right. you know we this this shouldn't be a big game a hard game to win it is their first region game uh, not sure how many games. I don't know if New Hope had a game before last week and who they were playing, but, uh, you know, I think you're exactly right. Sylvania needs to just focus on themselves, do what they know they can do, you know, play good defense, which they do, run the ball, and, and then, you know, and, and, and Blake Spears just uh, have another good game passing and not turn the ball over. You know, in the past, Sylvania, the past couple of years, that's one. That's been one of the things that really hurt Sylvania Absolutely. was turnovers. And uh, you know, so far this year, I, I, off the top of my head, I don't remember hardly any turnovers for the Rams this year. So uh, I think the you know they got a great opportunity this week to get a big win, and then see where they go. I think the, after that, they they actually will be playing at uh, playing at home against North Sand Mountain. Mm -hmm. So another big region game after this week. Next, we have Collinsville going to Gaston. You know, Collinsville again, 0-2, very young football team. Uh, man, they need a win bad. I mean, again, you know, just getting that first victory can do so much for you. But having to go play on the road when you're struggling, right. uh, uh, what does Collinsville need to do to get this first win? Well, it's like we said, I think they just need to focus on the little things like not not jumping off sides or not turning the ball over stop uh, playing good defense really because it seems like that's where most of their penalties come from are on defense but I feel like that this game would be a good game for them to get their first win in because uh, even that, even though it is at Gaston I think that Collinsville has what it takes to beat this team. Oh absolutely uh, you know C coach Willingham <clears throat> He does a phenomenal job, and uh, and I know he's not happy where they're at right now. And I hadn't had an opportunity to call him, and probably wouldn't be a good time to call him anyway right now. But uh, you know, he he, he knows football, and uh, I know they're working hard. And again, you know, the the McKinney kid is is a great athlete. Uh, Caleb Jones, super athlete, mm -hmm. great quarterback, has a rifle arm, and uh, you know, I think you're exactly right get rid of the mistakes, and I think this team can compete with just about anybody. I agree. And so we'll see this week, you know, I know they were inside the 20-yard line a couple of times last week against Ider, turned the ball over on, you know, mistakes, you know, offsides, jumping offsides, just things that you can't do when you're playing a good football team. So we'll see how that shakes out this week, but I think this Collinsville team, if they can correct those mistakes this week, I think they got a very good opportunity of getting a win. You know, next, We've got Geraldine traveling down to Sardis. Yeah, you know, Geraldine comes in with a huge win over Pisgah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sardis, uh, you know, their quarterback was back last week. They actually played Madison Academy and could be one of the biggest upsets, I guess, if you <laughs> want to say this, that they've had in a long time. They upset uh, Madison Academy 18 to 17. And so what's your thoughts on Geraldine as they travel to Sardis this week? I, well, I actually do believe that this game is at Geraldine because if I'm... You're if right, I'm not, it was. Yeah. And I don't know how I got that because <laughs> for some reason in my, on one of the schedules I looked at, it actually has them traveling to Sardis. But I, 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 but it is, you're well, right, it I, is at Geraldine. I wouldn't have known that either if I didn't remember that we traveled to Sardis last year and uh, struggled. 
a lot that that game. I mean, Sardis beat Geraldine 28 to nothing last year, and the quarterback just picked the defense apart like he did against Plainview two weeks ago with his arm and on his on the ground. And so, and honestly, I believe most people thought that last year was Geraldine's year to win, to uh, at least come in second or third in the region. But I feel I'm, they may be this way this year. So I think that uh, Geraldine's really just going to have to step it up on defense to uh, contain the quarterback and to defeat this Sardis team. Yeah, I'm telling you, the quarterback for Sardis is a phenomenal athlete. Uh, you know, against Plainview before he got hurt, uh, they didn't have an answer on defense mm -hmm. for him. Uh, you know, they run out, they run out of the wing tee. He does a lot of times. So you know, he he, of course he he fakes the ball really well to his running backs. And he pulls it to the side and, and does a lot of keeping, you know. And then he will, they'll also go out of that wing tee, he'll fake it, and, you know, and then just drop back and the guy's wide open. Right. The defense is going to have to concentrate. You know, they're going to have to key on him because if, if, they, if they let him start running down the field and, and you know, he, he is a load. I mean, he's, he's as big as any lineman they've got on their football team. And, uh, you know, this, it'll be hard to stop him. If they don't, you know, they're going to have to get him at the line of scrimmage. You know, if he gets out in the open, man, I, it, it could be a tough night for the Geraldine Bulldogs. So, we'll see how that goes. I, I think offensively, as you said, Geraldine is playing well, but I think the key to this football game is going to be defense and can they stop that quarterback. Absolutely. Uh, Plainview, you know, they'll be traveling up to Pisgah this week. Uh, you know, they're setting at 3-0 and on the season uh, for the first time in a long time. Uh, another big region game for them. So, so what's your thoughts on playing in Pisgah this week? Well, I think this is a good test for Pisgah because they get you really get to see what they're made of. I mean, last week against Geraldine, they didn't start off too well. Second half, they played a whole lot better than they did the first half. But if they can get, and like we said, Plainview's not a great first half team. So if Pisgah can uh, create opportunities to score early in the first half, and go ahead on Plainview going into halftime, I feel like that'll be a big confidence boost for Pisgah. Absolutely. Uh, you know, for Plainview Bears, I think they just got to continue playing the way they're playing right now. Uh, they do. You know, they're still having some uh, penalties uh, and, and getting in some situations where they, they, had, they had a safety where they snapped the ball over the punter's mm -hmm. head and just the little things that against a good football team can get you right. beat. So, uh, you know, I think they need to continue to improve defensively. Defensive backs uh, tend to be out of position and get burned a couple – they got burned on a couple of passes on Friday night. So, uh, you know, I know they're working on that hopefully this week to try to, to work on their, on their pass defense. But I think this Plainview team just needs to concentrate on doing what they're doing right now, but just doing it better. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I think they'll be fine. You know, next we've got Westbrook Christian traveling to five. Uh, Westbrook Christian was defeated by Sand Rock last week. Uh, again, five Red Devils. You know, we've talked so much about them. I don't even know what you can, <laughs> what else you can say about them. You know, they they're loaded with talent, and uh, you know, I think for five in this game, they just got to be five. Yeah, they just need to keep playing the way they have been playing these past couple of weeks, and just and just come out and defeat this team. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I guess the one thing that you have to worry a little bit about. Is injuries and uh, of course I know Fife is as you know loaded with talent. Uh, young have some young, really good talent that that doesn't get on the field right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know the thing they have to worry about is making sure they get, stay healthy. Right. You know when they get a big lead in a football game, hopefully he's pulling those starters and, and getting them out of there. So uh, I, th I think Fife just needs to play Fife football. I agree. So, Asbury will be traveling over to section, and uh, you know this section team. Uh, you know, if I was picking right, if I had to pick a team right now to be the most improved or, or just, I don't even know what the correct word is for it, but the section lines would be my team. I, I, you know, where they have come in two months to me is, is probably as good as anything I can remember right. over the last couple of years. So, Well, I think that section just needs to, well, they just need, like I said about five, they just need to come out and keep playing the way they have been. I mean, last week defense and offense stepped up and the week before that defense was a big part of that of that first win. And so I think that they just need to keep playing their style of football and keep uh, forcing turnovers on defense. Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, the one thing hopefully with Sexton this week is, 
is they'll be able to get some of their younger players in and get some playing time and, and build a little bit of depth on that football mm -hmm. team and, and uh, you know, not taking away anything from Asbury, but, you know, very young in football and a struggling program right now. And, and, and you know, I know they're trying to build a program, but, uh, you know, it's just – it's tough. You know, this right. is their second year of football and, and – and, just getting started is just tough. And this section team is, you know, very talented football team. And they continue to uh, impress me. You know, they've, they've been able to get some of the, their athletes who has not been playing football to come out and play that's really good basketball players or baseball players. And they're coming out to play football now. And as we saw last week with, uh, I can't remember his name, Anthony Scott returning a 67-yard interception for a touchdown. That's the kind of kids that's going to make this football team continue to get better each okay. week. Uh, last game we want to talk about is North Sand Mountain. And uh, North Sand Mountain travels to Brindley Mountain. You know, they come in after being defeated by Plainview. And uh, Brindley Mountain, you know, lost the game, but was it went into overtime. So they're playing better. Uh, again, this is another struggling team over the past couple of years. So uh, what's your thoughts on North Sand Mountain as they travel to Brindley Mountain this week? Well, I think that they're just going to have to get that Plainview game out of their mind, just completely erase that game altogether because of the, the turnovers, the penalties, the mis just little mistakes like that. And they're just going to have to go into practice this week and focus on trying not to make as many mistakes and go into this game and just play their style of football and just run the ball and pass the ball very well. Absolutely. Uh, I think this will be a, a, good, a good game for North Sun Mountain this week. And, uh, you know, hopefully – Hopefully they get some of the players that didn't get to play last week back if they were hurt. I know the linebacker uh, comes to mind, and hopefully he gets back on the field. And he, he's a difference maker on that football team. Well, we got to go to a commercial break, and when we come back, it's that time of the day or week again that we get to pick our winners this week. And so when we come back from commercial, we'll jump on that. Hello, folks. This is Andy White down here at Bobby Ledbetter's Twin City in Fort Payne, Alabama. I want to invite everybody to come out to our new location. We're at 1411 Glen Boulevard, right where you turn to go on Airport Road. We've got plenty of inventory for you to choose from. i got cars, trucks, vans, sport utility vehicles of any make and model. Come down here and visit us. Let us see what we can do for you. If you got some slow credit, I've got some banks that'll take care of that. We've got great financing. We've got a great selection of cars. Y'all come down here and see us. Don't take the first deal that comes along when you can do better at BobbyLedbetter.com and Twin City Used Car Sales, located at 1411 Glen Boulevard in South Fort Payne. Listen to some of Johnson's satisfied customers. Everything exceeded our expectations. No one will ever work here other than Johnson. We give them an A+. The crew was awesome. This is the third company that installed a unit in my house and the first that did it right. Don't you want to know what type of person is working at your home? All of our employees must pass a background check and are subject to random drug testing. We won't send anyone to your home that we wouldn't trust in ours. Call Johnson Heating and Cooling today, Alabama's largest and most awarded TVA dealer. At First Southern State Bank in Rainsville, we excel within the walls of our bank and outside these walls too. We're actively working with area schools to improve classrooms and supporting area student athletes on fields and courts. We work and worship at most churches in the Rainsville community. We also work to enhance the lives of area seniors, thanking them for a lifetime of contributions. We're the bankers and corporate citizens at First Southern State Bank. True community banking. Welcome back in, and now, Will, it's that time. You know, I think you you led the pack last week with 11-1 record. I uh, only missed... Uh, I don't remember which game you missed now. Section game, I think. Section game, yeah. You picked Gaston, and so you had a great week. Uh, I think I went nine and two. Margie, I don't remember. I think she was eight and three this week after going eleven and zero last week. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully, you know, I noticed where Bum had said he thought she must have been colorblind this week on a couple of <laughs> games. I I don't know about that, but uh, you know, let's uh, go ahead and, and pick our games. We just got a few minutes, so we're gonna have to go quick on these. Of course, Valleyhead and Jacksonville Christian, that's a forfeit. So if you don't pick Valleyhead in this one, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully everybody has picked that one. The first game we really want to talk is Crossville travels to Arab. Who you got in this game? I've got Crossville. I just feel like that they can keep things going and stay hot like they have these past couple of weeks and just come out and beat this Arab team. I think you're exactly right. I, uh, I, I did uh, take a look. I know Arab is struggling a little bit in uh, this Crossville team. 
you know, uh, they, they've got confidence that they probably hadn't had in years right now. Right. They, they feel like they can just beat anybody. And so, uh, and uh, you know, I think that has a lot to do with how you uh, – with winning football games when you feel like you can win. So I'm going with Crossville this week. Next, we got Eider at Sandrock. I'm going to go with Eider. I think that uh, they can step it up on defense this week and uh, their defensive backs can stay at home even on the run game. That way they're not drawn in on so many runs and then burn on a pass play. So I think that they're really going to focus on that this week. And so I've got Eider winning this football game. All right, I'm going with Sandrock this week. I, you know, uh, man, I struggled. This, this was the last game I picked on my sheet, actually, because I, I was back and forth. I really did not know who to pick in this one. Uh, I'm going with Sandrock just because they're playing at home. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I hope Otter proves me wrong this week. But uh, I'm going with Sandrock in that game. Next, we've got Sylvania traveling over to New Hope. Who you got? I've got Sylvania. I love the way they're playing, and I think that they can keep playing this, uh, this great and – as they go on into this season. Yeah, I think Sylvania just wins big this week. Mm -hmm. I, I don't look for this new hope to give them a whole lot of a whole lot of a test. And uh, I think Sylvania gets the first big region win and, and gets ready for the next one. Next, we got Collinsville at Gaston. I'm going with Collinsville. I think that uh, really they've gotten their two bad games out of the way that seems like everybody seems to have. And I think that this this week is a good time for them to get their first win. Yeah, I'm going with Collinsville, too. I think you'll see them pick up that first win of the season, and uh, and I think you'll see that they'll improve and get better as the season goes on. Next, and I think this is a phenomenal football game, you've got Sardis traveling up to Geraldine this week. Who are you picking in this one? Well, I got told I went with my heart instead of my head, so I've got <laughs> Geraldine uh, winning this football game. But I will say in my defense, when I was picking this game, I did not know that Sardis' quarterback was back. <laughs> so that is why that – I picked Geraldine uh -huh. mainly, and uh -huh. plus playing at Geraldine, it's it's just great atmosphere out there, and uh, new bleachers and everything draws a big crowd, and so I think that having a huge crowd behind them is going to help them out a lot. And you bleed purple. And I bleed purple. <laughs> <in my eyes. laughs> That's okay. I don't blame you for that. Uh, I'm going with Sardis. I just think this quarterback, uh, you know, seeing what he did to Plainview, and uh, you know, I know he was out when they played Sylvania. Uh, comes back last week, and, uh, you know, they handle a pretty good Madison Academy team. Uh, you know, they may not be quite as strong as they've been in the past, but uh, I dare say they're still pretty good. Mm -hmm. So I've got to go with Sardis on this one. And, and, again, maybe Geraldine proves me wrong this week. Next, we've got Plainview tra uh, traveling up to Pisgah. Who you got? I've got Plainview. Just the way that Pisgah started off, um, they struggled the first half last week against Geraldine. And, uh I think I hope that that won't continue for them, but just the way that happened last week, I just I've got Plainview. I'm going with the Plainview Bears, and uh, I think uh, I think they'll have a big win this week. And uh, you know, I guess y'all could say I bleed blue too, since I'm a <laughs> Plainview graduate. And uh, I hope uh, you know I hope they don't prove me wrong this week. <laughs> but I'm going with Plainview. I, th I think they I think they have a big win this week. I, I think they I think it'll be a a little bigger win than most people think. Right. Next, we got Westbrook Christian at five. Who are you picking? I'm going with five. I mean, there's just really nothing more that you can say about <laughs> five football other than they're loaded with talent. And Coach Benefield and Seth, like we said, being a coach on the field, just having those two out there really make a huge difference. Yeah. I, you know, I don't even know why we put this one on the sheet. I think most people <laughs> pick five every week. And, but, uh, you know, until somebody can prove me wrong against five, I'm, I'm five. You know, and uh, if – if I come in one week and I'm picking somebody besides five, y'all probably know something is wrong with me. So I'm, I'm picking the five Red Devils this week. Next, we have Asbury traveling to section. I've got section. I think I really like the way they've been playing on offense and defense these past couple of weeks, and their defense is really a big part of a lot of their score and forcing a lot of interceptions and turnovers, getting their offense the ball back. So I think that's really going to help them out this week. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. This section football team, uh, again, for me, the surprise team of the area right now, and uh, you know, setting at uh, two and one, opportunity to be three and one, and I think they get that third win this week without any problem as they defeat Asbury. Next, we have Sand uh, North Sand Mountain will be traveling to Brindley Mountain. Who you got in this one? I've got North Sand Mountain just not only because Brindley Mountain has been playing better, but they still struggled last week against New Hope. But North Sand Mountain. They they played well uh, 
pa the games before this plain view game this plain view game you can say it was a fluke but i mean just little things mistakes and stuff like that but i think that going into the practice this week they they're going to work on that a lot and just mostly erase those mistakes oh yeah i'm i'm, I'm picking north side mountain i think you'll see them come back strong this week <laughs> and defeat this Brindley Mountain team. All right, so we're going to jump into a couple of college games, and we may talk about one or two more if we have time. Uh, Colorado State will be traveling down to Alabama. Uh, who you got in this one? I've got Alabama. I think that Jalen Hurts is going to have a big game for this Crimson Tide, and then coming out in the second half, it'll probably be one of those games where they're up so much, he'll start the third quarter, but then after that, they'll get some of the backups yeah. in. I'm going with Alabama too. Now, I, w I do think this game will be a little closer than, than people think. Uh, you know, Major Apple, Apple White is the quarter is the coach there now, and uh, you know, a, a very good young coach, and uh, he's got this team playing well. But I, I think talent-wise, Alabama's just way too much mm -hmm. for them. Uh, next game, I think, is going to be a phenomenal football game. LSU will be traveling to Mississippi State. Who are you picking in this one? I struggle with this one, but I ended up picking LSU. I mean, they they didn't start. I mean, I know they played Chattanooga last week and. Were actually down at one point three to nothing in that game, but they came back and handled that game. And I didn't get to see much of the Mississippi State game, and I haven't seen much of them play uh, yeah. them play much this season. So I don't really know how well they're looking. I've heard they've gotten a whole lot better. So I think I agree with you. This game's going to be one of those uh, big matchups in the SEC. I'm going with Mississippi State, and uh, you know I just uh, I've been kind of watching some of the things they do. They've got a phenomenal quarterback. I don't know if you remember. Dax Prescott, who is mm -hmm. the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Well, this kid reminds me a lot of him. This team reminds me a lot of the Mississippi State team, you know, a couple of years ago. They were ranked number one in the yeah. nation for, you know, a couple of weeks. And, uh, and uh, they, they've got an opportunity to have a good football team. They are playing at Mississippi State. And uh, this is one of those gut feels. And I actually listening to a sports station this morning, and a couple of those guys were were leaning Mississippi State too. So I think uh, I think Mississippi State's going to pull the upset this week. So I'm going with Mississippi State. All right, you know, uh, man, we've talked about all these games, and uh, you know, it's hard to believe we're already in week three. But uh, you, we're going to see how these things shake out this week, man. Going to be a lot of great football, and uh, uh, you know. Hopefully, all of our local teams will win, and uh, it's just going to be another great week of football. You know, some great football games in college coming up this weekend, too, but other than the ones we've talked about, you know, Tennessee and Florida are playing, and uh, uh, just a lot of great football, and man, we appreciate you guys tuning in this week, and uh, you know, we hope to, that you'll be back with us again next week, and God bless each one of you, and we'll see you again next week, and I hope you have a great weekend. <music>